So here we are, having just brought down the land god Fa, who is being weaponized by Hephaestus, and have sent Hephaestus back to the cloud. And we're going to press forward into what is remaining in this facility here, which is significant. Well, to your comment, Maz, that this is the style of gaming content that led you to um, watching streams. I wanted to put my memory to use. Um, I'm a lore hound. I like, and you know this. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Was that the spirit, Minerva? I, I don't think so. At least, not directly. Welcome, graduates of Cradle Nine. So this facility that's in front of us just recognized that we were part of the birthing system at Eleuthia 9. What's interesting is they also recognized Zoe as that to me. Which means not only did the Nora come out of Eleuthia 9 and kind of stay there, that's all Mother Mountain, but then the Karja split from them and the Osirum... I've always wondered where they came from. They're nor more north, and there's not a lot of backstory as if they are an offshoot of the Nora or if they come from a different cradle. But she didn't say graduate of another cauldron or another uh, birthing chamber. Remember to clonk that follow button. And I'm not sure that isn't just she gave the majority because both Varl and and Nor and uh, Aloy are from the Nora tribe and obviously out of Eleuthia 9. So I, I just find it interesting that another thing wasn't mentioned here. Like she didn't say cradle 9 and 10 or something like that. So um, we'll press forward. But I don't care if you play uh, cards or whatever, man. So I'm, I'm fine with that. If it shows up on stream, it just shows that we do interactive things on the Twitch side. And that's cool with me. But we were just welcomed in by a synthetic voice. I haven't played Uno in a long time. In reference to card games. That door does not open. But I guess to what I was saying before the synthetic voice started is I Attention. Of course. Something doesn't want us here. Is my memory is what it is, and I like to have that knowledge in a game. So, the idea of playing what is becoming one of my, or is one of my favorite series, and being able to convey the the depth of what they've built here from Gorilla um, seemed to be a very natural pairing. And as as I watched some other, you know, YouTube content on Horizon, I was like, man, I know so much of this. Wouldn't it just make a whole lot of sense to play it again, having knowing the plot? So I'm not, I know how not to spoil something, and. Walk through the what content. Exactly was this place? <coughs> Seen anything like it before? No. These desks were made there. for people. That's our way out. But have a look at this. This is obviously a set environment that was made for people. And again, the synthetic voice said, "Welcome, graduates of Cradle Nine." So it looks like. As we discussed in a prior episode, the Gaia system was originally intended to be handed over to an educated human populace to be to continue to be run. And this gives credence to that. This looks like it was set up as some aspect of that ongoing caretaking that was intended by humans. <clears throat> Error. Unauthorized access. Initiating facility lockdown. Stay out. What's going on? Well, at least the emergency lights work. What just happened? Minerva's definitely here. And I think it's trying to keep us out. I'll scout ahead, see if there's a way to get us in. You sure we shouldn't come with you? Well, yeah, Minerva could be dangerous. Let me make sure it's safe. Okay. We'll be right here if you need us. All right. So we're not going through that door. 
<clears throat> Came through that door and we're locked in. That's lit up, but that's not a point. I feel like there should be a duct or something here that I'm looking for. In the end, every plan relies upon a strong arm and tempered steel. Indeed it does. He's doing okay, Zo. Zo? All this. Minerva. Hephaestus. Gaia. This is what will help heal Plainsong? It's hard to explain. I mean, I barely understand it, but yeah. It's what Aloy's been looking for this whole time. Up we go. Okay. I need to find where Minerva's hiding. I should look for a way to access the facility systems. How much time has passed between games? So from Zero Dawn to Forbidden West, the beginning of Forbidden West is about... Six months to start. And then the events of each game supposedly take about six months per. I can't go through that door yet, right? Locked. Nope. Like I said, Aloy is supposedly 19 at the start of Zero Dawn, and her 20th birthday happens around the time that she is at Meridian meeting the Sun King of Vod in Forbidden West. Obviously, a massive data core here. Look at this. What are all those cables in the center for? Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Look at that. You guys beat the boss. The nerve is shutting me out. Like this might be where data is stored, but I don't see a way to access the system. I better keep looking. This leads. Hmm. Go this way. The other way now. I can feel a draft above. Might be a way out of this shaft. Right there. Well, yes, but what's down here first? <clears throat> Green Greenshine. I'm sure Phil's big wheel could relieve you of your tributes as Rocket. Yes. The one thing, Rocket, is there is a thing for 750,000 tributes part of the facility. for your own custom intro sound. Which is kind of the whole point of the, the raiding of Eddie's of Eddie's vault was to build up a big enough pile to get one, and you would be the first. Right now. I should turn back. All right, so what else I can find? I don't know. It's whatever you want.
Maybe you choose Gilly saying what what in the butt or Looks something. Like I should head up. And I'm outside. I need to find a way back into the facility. All right. Very cold up here, obviously. Great. I can merge it with Gaia. Finally bring her back. And we can start fixing the blight, the storms, and maybe she can help me figure out who those strangers in the proving lab were. Nope, that was the way we just I came up. Why did they want it back up? Maybe that is the way. Just need to trust my instinct more. Yes, I did. But where? There's no scalable point here. You'd think that would be climbable, but it's not. Or that. There is a climbable area there once we get up there. Okay, maybe that. All right. is going to put us back there. Why would I be able to climb on this stalagmite if there was nothing else to do here? Can't go that way any further. Can't climb up any further. Can go there, though. Well, this is wacky. There we go. Now we're making progress towards the climbable area. That was something else. I would not have expected to have to have gone that way. And I've already done it once, so. But we're here. Now let's not mess it up. Looks like I have to glide down there. Yep. Yeah. I have a grappling hook. It's called a pole caster. It just serve no purpose there. It will serve a purpose here, though. Pipes up there. Might lead me to a way back in. But how to reach them? Not that way. There's our plan. Oh, another shaft. Diggity. Okay. 
Okay, now I've got to find a way to plug into this place. All right, let's go all the way around. Looks like some kind of dome. Wonder what it's for. All the way around, so we can simply check underneath here. So it probably just dropped off the edge over there, but whatever. See, look, grappling hook, man. Well, that looks very old world AI like down there. to be like this. Do you remember it? Anything? You were part of something bigger once. Something good. Gaia. That's right. She can live again. But only if you give her the chance. I can't reboot her without you. I cease. I think you'll disappear into her. Become part of her, like you used to be. Misery will cease. Thank you. Thank you, Minerva. <laughs> Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master override activated. Restoring Minerva function to original code. to initiate heuristic matrix. Here goes. So it is Aloy, not Elizabeth. We have much to discuss, but initialization of my heuristic matrix will not be complete for several minutes more. In the meantime, I suggest you familiarize yourself with this facility. It is our best option for a base of operations, and you can make use of its equipment to improve your ability to override machines. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Shall I grant access to your companions? They will be here shortly. Um, okay, but don't overwhelm them, okay? They don't have a lot of experience with things like, well, you. Uh, so no fake this time? No. 
This time she's real. Borel? So? This is Gaia. Hello. Hi. Hi. Gaia's still, uh, waking up. Let's look around. I will highlight the location of the lab on your focus. I have established a network between your focuses, allowing you to communicate when apart. Good. So what was this place? A regional control center, where Zero Dawn progeny would have overseen terraforming operations in the area. So to take a beat here, when I first played Forbidden West, the concept that we had just gotten Gaia was a really cool moment. And in the terms of the plot, it's a made it's obviously the major deal. But what she just described is this was a regional facility for Zero Dawn Progeny, the Cradle Nine graduates, to manage local terraforming operations. So again, the intent was for one day the educated humans to take over from Gaia. And that is what this facility was for this area of what is, you know, formerly what was formerly the, the Western United States. And as Gaia said, this is our best option for a base of operations, which is very Mass Effect Normandy-like. What's all this? This was intended as the main gathering space for control center operatives. You could fit a good number of people in here. Or maybe just a few. To start with, you two go ahead. I'm going to poke around a bit. So this was supposed to be... the lab. That was its intended purpose. <clears throat> Some of the machine data you recovered from the repair bay below us appears to be corrupted. Accessing the terminal in this room will show you how to repair and complete the override. I'll take a look. So this is where we diverge from Zero Dawn, where you just got intact overrides <clears throat> in Forbidden West. You must craft them, and you gotta be careful here because they take materials. Now, I'm not in any way, shape, or form in bad way for materials on the specific machines here. I have more than enough materials to get these ones done, so we're gonna make them now. And no more to done. No more to do. Well, I was able to repair some of the corrupted overrides. But it looks like I need data from more <laughs> machine parts to fix the rest. My initialization is complete. You may continue to explore the facility, Aloy. Sturm, to your... When you are ready, return to the <clears throat> control room. We have much to discuss. To your comment, um, there is still... This story is great. And the, the two games combined are a great story. Um... I would highly encourage you, if you've never played Zero Dawn, to s mute me, <laughs> go lurk around, get the game, and play through it. It is a fantastic narrative. And we surely have not spoiled everything from the Zero Dawn playthrough. There's a lot in that game. But yeah, story-wise, it is a great story. So this place was here all this time. <clears throat> How does this run on the PS4? The people who would never show up. Why didn't they? Remember that guy I told you about? Ted Farrow? He... sabotaged things. It wasn't supposed to be this way. So, how does this run on the PS4? The game runs well. It doesn't run as clear or crisp to frame rate as this. 
Um, but it does run well. The catch is that the DLC Burning Shores will not be on PS4. It's a PS5 only. Looks like an office. Correct. The facility was designed with a number of private offices. I guess it's nice to have a space to call your own. But I have watched streamers play it on PS4, and it's perfectly fine. And I still get asset pop in here. This would have been an access point for advanced training modules on terraforming operations. Unfortunately, those modules were deleted when the Apollo database was destroyed. That's too bad. So, I'm going to answer a couple questions here. The comments being made by Guy are pretty important. And so, Richie's question, should I buy it for my son on the PlayStation 5 and remote play for my PC? Um, it's possible. It depends on your, I would say, the fidelity you're going to achieve depends very greatly on the quality of the land in your house. Um, because you will see some pixelation and frame rate drops on PS5 remote play. I, I, I have played some games, and I mean, here's my PC, the PS5, it's right there, I can touch it. They're wired into the same router, which is literally on the other side of this monitor. And they're cabled. Nothing is running wireless. And I still ran into some some of that blocky pixelation that occurs when you're doing remote video rendering. So is it playable? Absolutely. Are you going to achieve the fidelity of playing it first firsthand? No. Um, but it you're not it won't I don't think it will diminish your experience too badly. Uh, control control latency was very good. I, I did not feel that control latency, and I did play this remote play as well. I did not feel that control latency was a problem, so I feel that's viable. But to what Gaia just said, the lack there's there's no terraforming information available in this lab right now because of what Ted Farrow did. Now, Ted Farrow is the man who owned Farrow Automated Systems. He d he is the primary guy behind, his company was behind the, the creation of the Chariot line of machines. That is the Scarab, the Horus, which is the big one, and the Kopesh, which is the middle-sized one. And those machines were given a biomass consumption backup fuel capability, but they went rogue. And because of that biomass consumption, they were able to to wipe out life on Remember Earth. to clonk that follow button. And Zero Dawn was the response to that. And the Apollo database, which was part, the Apollo subfunction, which was part of Zero Dawn, was the sum of all human knowledge and culture. And Ted Farrow, we're going to get into reasons why as we get through this playthrough, but he chose to, and this is after the death of Elizabeth Sobek, chose to purge Apollo from the Zero Dawn system because he felt that it was handing the future of humanity the key to their own destruction. And he also, at the same time, murdered all the Alphas. Um, but that's why Apollo is gone. No, no problem for the answers, Richie. I mean, very happy to share. Very few games, very few, especially AAA games, hold themselves to a very high quality standard, and, and the Horizon series certainly has. I feel it has picked up a torch from Assassin's Creed and Mass Effect in many ways. We're just looking around here. We're going to talk to Guy here in a moment. I just want you guys to have an idea. So this looks like a shower facility, tubular showers. You can see the jets on the walls in there. And it, 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 to my point, how, how you have to look really closely to even see those in there. And that's a level of detail that I'm very appreciative of. The fact that they thought this place out so well, this decrepit base sinks, what is a toilet behind here, privacy door, gender neutral. It looks to be in, in design. It, it just... Additional. What's this space there you for? Go. This would have been the sleeping quarters for control center operatives. Reminds me of the bed house Aspirin sat to sleep in the night before the proving. So lockers, futuristic bed and wall type design. 
I imagine that flips up and there's storage underneath it. You know, a private, what is a locker here for whomever, a desk, a desk space, chair up as if it was never used. Just really, a really well thought through design plan for this space. And considering how often in this game you will come here, and this is a departure from Zero Dawn. There was no hub, no home to experience. This is a very well thought out space. It's like a communal eating and seating area here. A lot of these doors will be locked to us for now until we progress. Looks like another office. If no one's ever been here, who built all this? Gaia did, with the help of machines. Machines that she designed and Hephaestus made before they were separated and Hephaestus went crazy rogue and the derangement started and I am intentionally walking slow because there is a there is a level of detail to be appreciated so that door is locked that is an exit door we can't leave yet because story doesn't want us to and then this is the door we came up from or a way back down into that data core that we saw earlier we progress back down in here as this door opens this all much more decayed and decrepit down here, but if you... Oh, I've been down mm -hmm. here before. It's where I first got into the facility. That heavily cabled core and data center is down here, and now we can just walk down into it. This area will will be a place we visit a few times, story-wise. Um, but it's just... I wanted to reconnect it to the idea that we came up from below through all that inner working, and the, it's well-designed enough that it is actually all still connected. It wasn't just a series of rooms that you know you loaded out of and loaded into that weren't actually structurally and architecturally connected. They were purposefully. This was purposefully very well crafted. But let's go have a conversation with Gaia and begin to figure out what exactly is going on and how how we can. Okay, maybe it's time to talk to Gaia. Get the terraforming system back I'll lead up. You to it. And for those of you that were unfamiliar with my style of playing, I did change Aloy's clothes due to climate, and I will continue to do that. It's cold here, so she is wearing her much more robust tracker outfit, which has the fur lining and fur cape. Hello, Aloy. Uh, hi. So you're ready? Yes. Initialization is complete. All tests show that my heuristic matrix launched correctly and is stable. You must have many questions. Yeah, but two big ones first. I think Aloy would prioritize her questions about the strangers, but that is a much more dense topic. So we're going to start with subordinate functions. We're not going to be able to fix the biosphere without making you whole. I ran a search for your subfunctions at the Hades Proving Lab, but Minerva was the only one I found. Thankfully, the sensory capabilities of this facility are far more advanced. I will search for the others now. Transmitting query pattern. Receiving. Apollo, Artemis, and Aluvia, I can find no trace. They are simply gone. What about the others? Ether, Demeter, and Poseidon are revealed. They lie within reach, procurable. And Hephaestus? It too stands revealed, but it is not like the others. 
That's for sure. In the years since the extinction signal, Hephaestus has evolved. Moreover, it is not confined to a single location. It haunts the global network that connects cauldrons to each other across the planet, making it exceptionally difficult to subdue. Let me guess. We need it bad? Correct. Its capabilities are essential. Without it, I can only delay the extinction of life on Earth. Hephaestus is our only hope of a permanent solution. So we start there? Unfortunately, we cannot. Procuring Hephaestus can only be attempted after my own capabilities have been significantly enhanced. Grab the other subordinate functions first, then Hephaestus. Precisely so. So, Aether, Demeter, and Poseidon. How do I capture them? To recover a subordinate function, you will have to travel to its location and find the physical processor to which it escaped. Then, exactly as you did with Minerva, you must use the Master Override to revert the subordinate function to its original code state. And then how do I get it back here? The subordinate function must be loaded onto a data storage device and physically carried back to this facility. The cartridge your root kernel was stored on? Yes. Its capacity is limited, so it can only carry one subordinate function at a time. But in all other respects, it will suffice. Now the big question. Let's let's chew on what was just said. Hephaestus is in the the internet which connects the cauldrons, and as Gaia stated, he's essential. She cannot fix the biosphere. She does not have control of the subfunction, which is directly responsible for the manufacture of the equipment, because that is basically Hephaestus's job. He he worked as a part of Gaia to produce machines that say Poseidon, who is responsible for cleaning the water, or Aether, who is responsible for cleaning the air. They would report back to Gaia that this is what they needed. Gaia would say, okay, Hephaestus, we need to make this because that's what Poseidon needs, and then the machine would be produced, um, as well as things like the Spire. So without Hephaestus, without the manufacturing capability, the making of things, Gaia can't do anything. But tracking Hephaestus down will not be easy because of the way the way in which he resides in a network instead of in a physical data container like the other subfunctions currently do. There's also something to do with the fact that Hephaestus is actually a self-aware, as all the functions are, and his evolution has made him a competitor for dominance almost within the heuristic matrix. So they can't just simply go get Hephaestus. They need to, as Gaia said, enhance her capabilities or make her heuristic matrix more dense or denser than Hephaestus's so that they can then acquire and integrate, reintegrate Hephaestus back into Gaia. But how about Leotopolis, the Hades proving ground where Hades was tested against you and those crazy futuristic people with shields and machines we've never seen before, Gaia? What about them? And this is very interesting. Maybe you can help me make sense of something. A while ago, I had a run-in with a group of... strangers who tried to kill me. They had machine servitors and a, um... a, a clone of Elizabeth Sobek with them. Yes, this was recorded by your focus. Do you know who they are? The answer to that question is related to the extinction signal that woke Hades, prompting my predecessor's self-destruction. The extinction signal? Okay, that sounds ominous. The signal did not come from Earth, Aloy. The calculations are complicated but it appears to have originated 81 trillion kilometers away. Well, 8.11 light years. A distance so vast that light
light itself requires 8.611 years to cross it. So, what's so far away, and, and why does it want us dead? The Sirius Star System. Sirius? But that's where Far Zenith, their ship... The Odyssey. Yes, that's where it was headed. But it blew up. Unless... Uh, I don't... Why make it seem like they failed? That no one would follow them. They didn't want anyone to know. They didn't want future humans to think that they were out there. Wait. The strangers who tried to kill me at the Hades Proving Lab? The ones with the clone? Are you saying that they're from... That they're descendants of... Farsenith? Yes. That is my conclusion. Let that one sink in for a moment. If you remember in the very first episode of the series, I made mention of the 8.611 light years figure and how important that would be. It was for this conversation. The extinction signal, as Gaia just stated, was transmitted from off Earth. And she is surmising it was by far Zenith. So right now, in terms of the plot development, Gaia and Aloy believe that Far Zenith, for some reason, wished to unshackle Hades and instruct Hades to wipe out Gaia and all life on Earth, or wipe out all life on Earth by taking over for Gaia. Not wipe out Gaia. Gaia responded by detonating the Gaia Prime facility, birthing Aloy. And now, to reach this point, the the reinitialization of Gaia, but she is in a what I would call a degraded state. It's an amazing piece of storycraft to have that from the first game manifest itself here 150 game hours later. And the foreshadowing that they did with the tutorial, which is why I didn't skip it, with this is the Far Zenith facility that we're looking for a copy of Gaia in because maybe they have it. It was... It's interesting. We're going to ask some more questions about the Zenus here. So, let's start with how does Gaia know about the signal? How did you figure out that the extinction signal came from Sirius? The key came with data on your focus from Silence interrogation of Hades. The duration of the signal itself, 17.22 years. Oh, that doesn't make sense. You said that the signal took 8.6 years to arrive from Sirius. Why would the signal keep transmitting after it was received and you blew yourself up? Because the sender didn't know that had happened until it received notice from Hades. Which would take another 8.6 years to get back. Correct. Only then would the sender stop broadcasting after a total of 17.22 years. So the duration, halved, gave me the distance the signal traveled. With that in mind, I simply scanned my astronomical database for any relevant location 8.6 light years away. Because it was Far Zenith's intended destination, <coughs> Sirius was the only logical source. <laughs> I was told there would be no math. It's pretty simple math. All right. What about this clone they had on board? That seems to be a copy of Elizabeth and Aloy. Well, more Elizabeth. But a sister clone to Aloy. The descendants I ran into at the Hades Proving Lab, they... They had a clone. Of Elizabeth Sobek. So that's consistent with the idea that they came here to salvage Zero Dawn technologies, right? Yes. As your own experience demonstrates... The clone of Elizabeth Sobek functions, in effect, as a key to the terraforming system. But... how could they have made a clone? The Odyssey carried approximately 200,000 human zygotes, millions of animal zygotes, and billions of plant seeds. 
It is conceivable that Elizabeth Sobeck's genetic material was sampled, with or without her knowledge, and carried aboard the ship in storage. That's... Okay, but... I mean... This, this clone... How could she participate in this? Destroying Elizabeth's dream? It's... It's evil. It is difficult to know. Perhaps she is loyal to the group and shares their objectives? Or perhaps she is a subordinate and has no choice but to comply with their orders? Elizabeth Sobek? A subordinate? I don't think so. Well, I mean, that's... It's all a matter of environmental conditioning, isn't it? Aloy had generous freedom as an outcast, and we don't know anything about Beta yet. Why, why are as far as Zenith doing this? The sole purpose of the signal was to destroy life on Earth, right? Why would descendants of Far Zenith want to do that? At this point, we can only speculate. I mean, Earth posed no threat to them. We don't have the technology to get in their way. We didn't even know about them. True. Unless... Well... Could it be that they want the planet for themselves? The strangers I ran into, they were after a Gaia backup of their own. I mean, if they did that... If they booted their own Gaia and boosted her power... Until she could take control of Hephaestus... And then the whole terraforming system... Then yes. The system could be used to do what the extinction signal failed to accomplish. Snuff out life, and then potentially to build an entirely new biosphere, to their specifications. So they could be trying to do the same thing we are. But with opposite results. Extinction, instead of salvation. Well, this is not good. And herein lies the flaw in their logic. Going back to Horizon Zero Dawn, in the Gaia Prime and the facility underneath Sunfall, which used to be the head of uh, U.S. Robotics Command, there are recordings of Travis Tate explaining how Gaia would fake allowing H Hades to, to usurp her in testing. Gaia's prime directive is the preservation of life, using Gaia directly as a means to destroy life is not, she's AI, she's aware, it's not something she would do. So right here, and I'm not spoiling anything that is not available from any information up to this point, the idea that Far Zenith descendants would take Gaia and then rebuild her and reincorporate Hephaestus into her to then use her to destroy the biosphere is not something Gaia would do. It's, it's absolutely against who she is. So there is a flaw in the idea that Far Zenith wants Gaia and will use Gaia as the direct instrument to destroy the biosphere. And I caught this the first time I played this too, and I was like, that's wrong. So I wanted to mention it here. Let's talk about how the Descendants got here. You said Sirius is really far from Earth. 81 trillion kilometers, or 8.611 light years. Right. So, how would the Descendants have gotten here? On a spacecraft much like the Odyssey, though significantly more advanced. The journey from Earth to Sirius would have taken the Odyssey almost 300 years. This appears to have been much faster. If their ship departed Sirius at the same moment the extinction signal first began transmitting, the journey was made in just 29 years at an average of 0.297 the speed of light. If they did not set out for Earth until they learned of the extinction signal's failure, the journey was even faster, a mere 13 years, or 0.662 the speed of light. Okay, enough. You're making my head spin. But they left relatively at the same time the extinction signal started. And we can dig into how we know that from Beta's age, like we did a few episodes ago. But Beta's age is indicative of when they left. 
Let's talk about this signal, this extinction signal, and how it maybe affected the other subordinate functions. The extinction signal didn't just wake Hades. It made every subordinate function self-aware. Why? I have wondered this myself. So far as I can tell, Hades was the sole target, and the partial sentience imparted to other subordinate functions was incidental. Hmm. So the signal could only have been sent by someone who had thorough knowledge of the system, huh? Yes. The signal's design was exceptionally precise and highly advanced. Were its intentions less malevolent, I would admire the intellect or intellects that produced it. And there again comes back to my prior point. Gaia recognizes what the signal was supposed to do, and you can see in her the rejection of appreciation for it because of its intention. Whereas otherwise, she would have appreciated its sophistication. So if the Descendants came to Earth on a spaceship, I guess we can assume that their technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounter with them at the Proving Lab amply demonstrates, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they seem to be equipped with some kind of protective energy field that shields them from harm. Yeah, no kidding. The one I fought seemed indestructible. Throughout history, every defensive technology has eventually been defeated by an offensive counterpart. Perhaps a way can be found to defeat their shielding. Yeah, I hope so. Or I'm not going to be winning fights against them anytime soon. The statement that throughout history, every defensive de technology has been defeated by an, an offensive counterpart speaks to very much the warlike nature of humanity. Okay, the subordinate functions, the things that we have to go get. Let's talk about the ones that you found, Gaia. The three subordinate functions that you detected. What do we know about them? All three are relevant to problems currently plaguing the biosphere. Ether is responsible for detoxifying the atmosphere and moderating the weather. Poseidon controls the organic and chemical composition of water resources. Demeter sows, fertilizes, and tends to plant life. If all three were restored to me, they would constitute a massive increase to my heuristic processing density. But beware. Their responses to my query pattern were... Irregular. In human terms, they are frightened, lost, and paranoid. Like Minerva. They need to be whole again. <clears throat> exactly. Artemis, by the way, <clears throat> one of the functions she couldn't find, is responsible for the moderation of animal life. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the Earth with a variety of animal species. Eleuthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. Unfortunately, all archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066, by order of Ted Farrow. Farrow, huh? I really hate that guy. Understandable. He appears to have been pathologically narcissistic, impulsive, and unstable. Hmm. All three of the like missing Elon functions Musk? have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? If attainable, yes. Restoring their remaining elements would increase my heuristic processing density. Unfortunately, I have no way to track them. They have disappeared without a trace. And therein, I believe, lay the hook for the next game. Because they will not be located in this game. And they're out there. Somewhere. Hopefully. Maybe not Apollo, but... What about Hephaestus, who is now apparently the big bad AI that has replaced Hades as our problem? You said you need Hephaestus to save life from extinction. Why? 
Every subordinate function has value, but Hephaestus is by far the most important. Only by recovering and merging it can I regain my ability to design and mass-produce new machines at cauldrons across the planet. Only through it can I program new machines and alter the tasking of existing machines to completely reverse environmental damage. Recovering other subordinate functions may buy us time, but without Hephaestus, I cannot permanently stave off mass extinction. Given Hephaestus' importance, is there really no way to capture and merge it first? I'm afraid that is quite impossible. In my present state, launched and merged with Minerva, I am operating at less than one-fifth, 18.8%, of my intended processing capacity. Hephaestus dwarfs this figure. Were an attempt made to conduct the merge under these circumstances, Hephaestus would absorb me, rather than the other way around. A merge cannot be attempted until my heuristic processing density exceeds its own. And how many subordinate functions is that going to take? Merging Ether, Demeter, and Poseidon will expand my heuristic network to 41.6% capacity, exceeding that of Hephaestus. So, yes. It is a convenient method to make us go fetch the other functions first. But I do appreciate the depth of thought that went into why we can't just go get Hephaestus first. It makes it make sense, and I can accept that. As a, from a story writing perspective, I can go, okay, that's logical, that makes sense. But how do we get Hephaestus once we're ready? You said Hephaestus isn't located in just one place. Correct. Unlike the other subordinate functions, which are confined to discrete physical processors, Hephaestus is distributed throughout the global network that connects the planet's cauldrons. So, when the time comes to subdue it, how do we make that happen? I do not know. While you are retrieving the procurable subordinate functions, I will attempt to find a solution. So, once Hephaestus has been recovered and merged, you'll regain the capacity to mass-produce machines at cauldrons around the world? Yes, and to program their behavioral routines or even control them directly. So could you build an army of machines? Attack the descendants of Far Zenith and take them out? It is in my nature to take any and all necessary steps to preserve life on Earth, human life above all. So yes, once I have been empowered with the capacities of Hephaestus, I could design, build, and command such an army. Given the nature of the Far Zenith threat, doing so may be our only option. I must admit, however, that I have misgivings about using such technology to kill, no matter how aggressive the enemy. <clears throat> That's good. It means you have a conscience. As Elizabeth intended. Indeed. Again, a detail where... She could build a robot army and wipe out whatever she wants. She's super powerful, but her own built-in programming, her conscience about the preservation of life, runs very counter to the current theory of Far Zenith wishes to use Gaia to wipe out all life. Let's talk about the biosphere. What is the state of the biosphere? Is the terraforming system functioning at all? In a sense, the terraforming system never stopped functioning. The difference, since my predecessor's destruction, is that there has been no central governing intelligence to monitor its robotic agents and assign new tasks. As a result, errors have accrued, and day by day, the biosphere has gradually veered ever more sharply towards destruction. In recent months, disturbances in the biosphere have become obvious. But these bellwether phenomena offer just the merest glimpse of the complex and accelerating cycles of environmental dysfunction, now driving Earth's biosphere towards collapse. 
And you can't do anything to stop it. If you can return Aether, Poseidon, and Demeter to me, I can improvise modest corrections to parts of the system. Weather will improve, water will be purified, and rampant plant growth curtailed. But such corrections will not stave off collapse. They will only buy us time. Only with Hephaestus can I design and produce new robotic agents designed to permanently reverse the damage that has accumulated. All efforts must be directed toward that end. Alright, so we're on a ticking clock here. How much longer do we have? How long do we have then? At present rates, without additional factors. The biosphere will cross a point of no return in approximately four months. And if I gather Aether, Demeter, Poseidon, merge you with them? We will only gain a few months more. Well, every bit counts. Okay, this far Zenith technology problem we have. So if the Descendants came to Earth on a spaceship, I guess we can assume that their technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounter with them at the Proving Lab amply demonstrates, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they okay, seem that's, to be energy. We've already heard that. Yeah, no yep. Kidding. It was still highlighted. Every defense, for example, assuming I We're going to skip it. So there's always. It was still highlighted as if we hadn't read it, but we certainly had. All right, so we've got work to do. We've got three sub-functions we have to find, and they are scattered further west than we are, which is very much in Tanakh territory. But let's get going. I guess I should get going and start bringing back subordinate functions. What can you tell me about their locations? When my predecessor destroyed herself, the subordinate function sought physical processors capable of holding them. So in each case, you will be looking for a powerful computer of some kind. Ether is the closest, and therefore might be the easiest to acquire. However, it appears to be in the middle of Tanakh territory. My knowledge of that tribe is limited to data I read on your focus, but they seem to have a significant inclination towards violence. Well, that's a nice way to put it. What about Poseidon and Demeter? Poseidon has taken shelter in the desert south of this location. My substratal geography data indicates that a major old world settlement called Las Vegas was located there. A ruin in the middle of the desert, huh? Strange place for an AI devoted to water. Agreed. As for Demeter, it appears to be located on the coast to the far west. Unfortunately, I am unable to provide any relevant data about the region. As such, it may be the most difficult to retrieve. Okay, so three subordinate functions to go after. Aether, somewhere in Tanakh territory. Poseidon in the desert, and Demeter on the coast. Where will you begin? <clears throat> We're going to do them in the intended order, which is by level. So we will go after Aether first. I think I'll head for Ether. Then I will assign Ether as the objective on your focus. If you obtain it, I may be able to use it to quell the most severe storms in the region. Though I will require Hephaestus and the control over machines that it offers to permanently stabilize the biosphere. Should you change your mind, you can update your objective via your focus interface at any time. I will also transmit a summary of available data on all of the subordinate functions to you for reference. Is there anything else I can help you with? I know you have a great deal to accomplish. I do, don't I? Is something wrong? Um, I don't know. It's just that... Elizabeth set the bar pretty high. She had a dream for you, for life on Earth, and a lot has gone wrong, and it's all on my shoulders to fix it. 
Do you think I can do it all? Repair the system? Defeat Varzenith? Live up to her example? Absolutely. In her last message, my predecessor declared her unwavering conviction in your success. In you, all things are possible. You prevailed in purging Hades and rebooting my system core. You will prevail in this. Thank you, Gaia. Well, I, uh... I guess I should get going. I have unlocked the facility's exits. One leads onward to the west. The other leads back down the mountain to Plainsong, should you wish to return east. Well? Whoa! Gonna have to get used to that. That you, Aloy? Uh... Yeah. Gaia's opened the exits to this place. Can you and Zoe meet me by the west door? Be right there. And so here we are. An episode very much heavy on the exposition, but very dense in critical plot elements. We will go meet Varl and Zoe and continue on here on the live side, but that will bring us to the end of the current recording on the youtube side and thanks all for watching it as always we'll pick things up here in a moment live and see what's going on out there and where we're going next but the pursuit of aether is, seems to be the primary goal and we'll tackle whatever else we run into along the way